Coming up on the program, we've got some problems with our corn. I'll explain what this is and why it's happened. And we have some problems in our front yard garden with slugs. We'll show you one method that we're going to use to eradicate them. All that and more coming up today on the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener is sponsored in part by For all your non-GMO, heirloom, organic, vegetable, flowers, and herb seeds, visit dollarseed.com. Sioux Growing Supply, located in Wausau, Wisconsin, focusing on certified leaf compost, an excellent amendment for poor soil. With their new garden blend, improving soil structure in clay and sandy soil, great for creating new garden beds. Also available from Sioux, pre-filled trays and pots with professional potting soil mix or organic rice hull based potting soil mix. Bag and bulk of certified leaf compost also available. Visit SiouxGrowingSupply.com. Don't poison your soil with municipal water. Attach a body, mind, and soil hose and filter. Free shipping exclusively through the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com. Just click on the body, mind, and soil icon. Authentic Haven brand, soil conditioner for the home gardener. Easy to brew, 100% organic. Visit ManureTea.com. Rain Reserve. Reserving your rain, preserving our future. Rain Reserve, manufacturing of rainwater capturing capabilities. Visit rainreserve.com and use coupon code RAIN2016 to save 10% on your total purchase. Welcome to Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener. I'm Joy Baird. We are in the between our two corn patches here. We've got some, uh, both of these are heirloom variety corn. That's Country Gentleman. This is an heirloom variety, the name escapes me right now, but you can see the difference here between the structure of the corn. We've got big, thick stalks in this here, and some of them, as I can't even reach the height of that, and I'm 5'8 plus, or 5'9 plus some stretching of the arm. So we've got incredible height there. We also got some good height over here, but you can tell on the stalks, they're much more spindly than those. Now couple reasons for this. That bed there has been planted in that specific location. This is the second year. That's not recommended and we, will ha we have results of why that's not recommended. This here is the first year of planting this bed. We've added a lot of amendments to the soil, built the soil up and planted. Obviously we didn't add enough amendments to this soil because of the spindliness and the small structure of the corn. Now we've made an executive decision here at the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardens that this will be the last year we will grow corn in the garden, simply because the return on investment is not worth the effort. We have successfully figured out how to grow, harvest, and have great ears of corn. But if you've gone to your local farms, farm, uh, farmer's market or, or uh, organic grocery store, you can buy a large quantity of sweet corn for a very minimal price, much cheaper then you can grow it in the garden here. And that's what we have decided to do from now on. But this is something that we, we couldn't have done earlier. Many years ago, we had problems and struggled. We were able to be very successful. Now I talked about reasons why you don't want to grow stuff in the same spot year after year. And this is a perfect example with this gentleman uh, heirloom sweet corn. This is corn smut. I'm going to pull it off the ear. It is um, an unpleasant looking item here. Now what the corn smut is a, a fungal, it's a disease, it's a, a, re, a result of a couple of factors and, and it is a delicacy in some uh, dishes in the Hispanic or Mexican uh, cuisine. Uh, northern far, uh, farmers in the northern United States will grow this and make this happen for a specific purpose, and that is to sell to Hispanic restaurants, and they do create dishes with corn smut. Well, the reason why it occurs, there's several factors in the, in, the, in the occurrence of this. One, very wet spring, followed by a dry summer, followed by more wet weather. Not really a factor here because we've had irrigation on this 
on a regular basis all summer long. The second factor, which is an a, overabundance of nitrogen in the soil. When we planted this bed initially last year, we added a high level of organic fertilizer. It had a very high level of nitrogen, about a 25, uh, 1917, I believe, something in that, something in that 25, 32. This year, the same, the same type of fertilizer, the same high number, that 25 to 32 percent nitrogen, we added to the soil. Well, this is the result. Now, this is not occurring on every ear, but this has occurred on about half dozen to 10 ears of the corn. I can pull an ear off here that is ready to go. Eh, yeah. And this ear is perfectly fine when it comes to eating sweet corn. There's nothing wrong with that ear at all. A very well structured ear. There's a little less ear, a little less uh, kernels on the high end here. And that's just because of pollination. This was on the outer edge on the back side there. So typically they're going to be less pollinated uh, than central corn because the tassels pollinate the, the ears. The pollen falls on the hairs, which indicates each hair is uh, represented per kernel. So it's not occurring on every ear, but it has occurred on several ears. Now there are recipes online that you can use to cook this down if you feel or find or want to experiment with it. Again, it is an edible portion if cooked and processed correctly and Hispanics or the Mexican community and uh, chefs are very well known in order uh, are, and are able to do that correctly. Uh, we're not going to try to sell this because we don't have enough of it and if this is occurring on your corn, that could be the factor. You're planting it in the same spot year after year. You've had a wet spring, dry summer, wet return, uh, a wet later sp uh, summer, and that's what also occurs. But most likely uh, on our situation, well, I know on our situation, it is because there's been too much nitrogen added to the soil. So this bed, as the corn matures, we will harvest it, and then we will not plant corn again uh, uh, for as far as we know, as long as we can think about and we'll put something else in this area. Now, what would be recommended in an area that contains a high level of nitrogen? Greens. This might be the best spot for us to put kale and Swiss chard come next year because those are leafy greens and green is uh, what the uh, nitrogen is what enables the plant to have good lush green foliage. And that is would be an ideal plant to put in this location for a couple of years in order for it to be, uh, suck the nitrogen back out of the soil down to more of a res uh, re uh, normal level. So that's, that's probably what we will do there. But corn smut, that's what's happening uh, and that's the reasons why it's happening. It can be eaten if you so choose to. You do not want to compost this. Another thing, if you do see this occurring on your corn, go ahead and remove it as soon as you see it because this can these will continue to grow and they can open up or, you know, they pop and infect other uninfected ears of corn that are around this particular ear. So keep that in mind. If you see this, get it out of there because it will affect other ears and you don't want to compost this. You just want to dispose of it in your trash and waste. So corn smut, sweet corn, that's what's happening. We are in our Florida Weave tomato patch, and as you can see, it is very crazy. We planted these intensely in a three, in a four by 10 foot square uh, raised berm, simply a designated grow area next to a permanent walk path. We planted 21 tomato plants in this bed and used sustained organic uh, fertilizer on them. Two of the rows, 14 tomato plants were Florida Weaved, which simply means there are strings here that the plants are growing in and is mimicking a cage. So if you don't have a cage, this is a great way to use, utilize, uh, save a lot of money. This is just agricultural bailing twine. You can get a whole roll of 20,000 20, feet for about 30 bucks and uh, multiple colors. It's plastic, it's synthetic, but it will last many, many years. And you want good steel tilt T posts in order to hold the weight of the tomatoes. Well, on the third row here, there were seven tomato plants that didn't get uh, Florida weave simply because forgot about it, ran out of time, didn't have the fence post, that type of thing. Well, what is occurring in this is 
the plants are falling down. And then the, these plants here are on the ground. And as the fruit develops, it weighs the plant down to where it's just vines on the ground. That's what a tomato plant is, a vine that because we structure it in a cage, it gets elevated and we're able to harvest produce off of it. As it's laying on the ground, the fruit is contacting the ground and beginning to rot even prior to developing color and changing. So in order to get a better harvest of tomatoes, if you've never caged them or just let them sprawl naturally, you're losing about 50% of possible uh, harvest on your tomatoes, just like we are here. We have lost a number of tomatoes because they're hitting the, they're on the ground, ripening or prior to ripening, getting moisture around them, not being able to dry and beginning to rot. This also allows insects such as slugs, snails, other insects to come in and begin to devour the tomatoes as well. So get them off the ground. Some of these we will be able to save, some of them will not. But this just indicates even more strongly that we need to make sure that our tomatoes are always elevated so we can get them off the ground, get more air circulation around them, get them to ripen quicker, and less bugs will get in there and eat them instead of us. We're in the front yard garden here, and this is kind of our overflow garden where our, our primary focus is on the large garden. So we kind of have a mishmash of a lot of stuff here, and we've tried some different things with uh, mulches. We've got pine needles on the ground here as a ground cover, which pine needles are not acidic at the time of breakdown process. They're acidic on the tree, but they're totally fine for a ground mulch, as well as we have trimmed our local shrubs and we brought those in as, and threw them down as ground cover as well. Well the two combinations have resulted in, an, in, uh, in, a, in a living situation for slugs. Now slugs are not something that you want to have around. They will begin to eat and devour what they are, our tomato plants here. So what we're going to do is beer and get them drunk and kill them that way. So. Uh, here's what I've got situated, uh, situated here. I've got two party cups. I've got one there and I've got one on the other side uh, next in the middle of the tomatoes. Now what is occurring is as moisture, as it rains, slugs need a lot of moisture to live, to, to maneuver. So what we have created is an environment of a lot of moisture with the pine needles and then the uh, clippings from the, the, uh, the bushes. Well, what we'll do in the, in the fall here, once we pull everything out of the garden, is I'll work this bed and work everything under the soil, and we won't use the pine needles as mulch anymore, because that's what we see a lot, even where there's no gra uh, bush clippings at. So what we've done here, we've done, we've buried the cup. You can use any type of device. Uh, you can use slug pellets. You can use a number of different methods. We've buried it one inch above the ground. Now, the reason why you want to do that is the slugs will smell the beer and s climb up and, and try to take a drink and fall in. The reason why you don't want to do it at ground level is because ground beetles, which are beneficial in your garden because they will devour and eat the slugs, if you put it at ground level, they'll fall in as well. So we don't want to kill the good bugs. We want to get rid of the bad bugs. So all we're going to do here is fill the party cup with your favorite beverage, uh, alcoholic beverage. Uh, per, if, you, if you don't want to use yours, maybe borrow your neighbor's and just let it sit there. Now, as it, if it rains, you're gonna have to reapply this, but the smell will entice the slugs and I'm gonna bring some of this around the edge here just a little bit, just so they have more of a secure area because slugs will be able to smell that, come in and uh, climb up and fall in. So. If you got slugs in your garden, that's one way to get rid of them using the beer method. Thanks for joining us. Join us again next time for more organic gardening and food preserving. I'm Joy Barrett and this has been the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener. For more information, please visit thewisconsinvegetablegardener.com.